Okay, we're back today and we're going to do some examples with static tension. Uh, the first one is a bear sling. So you have a tree on this side and a branch here and a tree on this side with a branch. And you, you want to hang your food up uh, above the ground so that uh, bears can't get your food. So you're going to tie a rope and the rope is going to go between the two uh, trees and you're going to hang your food from there. Now the food, the mass here of the food is going to be 70 kilograms and the angle that it makes with the rope, it makes with the tree is going to be 55 degrees on both sides. Now this isn't two separate ropes, this is actually one rope uh, and then on this side you know you can untie it but you'll have to climb up the tree. That's really not that important. Essentially all you need to realize is that there's only one tension in this rope because it's not two separate ropes. Uh, so it, maybe perhaps it passes through a ring here in the middle and uh, holding the mass up. <coughs> All right, so let's draw the free body diagram. And let's put the forces on it. And we'll do that in a different color. So we've got a force like that and a force like that and gravity going down, okay? Now, the one thing to remember here is the angle which is given and where it's given. So it's not given here, it's given there. So now you have to think carefully because you can either figure out the other angle or you can just use this angle but use the correct sine cosine values. So let me draw, let me draw this in uh, another color. How about say, let's go back to black. If I draw this force and I draw this force and these two forces, perhaps I could have drawn it a little bit bigger. It's kind of small here. Uh, but in any case, if this is the hypotenuse FT and this is the angle theta, then this angle would be FT cosine theta and this angle or this component would be FT sine theta. So if I draw that bigger so that it's more visible, essentially what we've got is theta is here and this is the tension force then and remember here is the head of that tension force then we had to add these two vectors this one plus that one and if theta is there now this becomes FT as I said just before sine theta because it's the opposite angle and this becomes FT cosine theta because it's the adjacent angle now it's the same for the other side as well because uh, both of these angles are the same. Now all we need to do is we need to break up this into horizontal and vertical. Let's do the vertical first. And we'll say, okay, summation of the forces must equal zero. For static equilibrium to be true, you can't have any acceleration because this thing is not moving. Now, we would say, okay, well, vertically, we've got three forces. One, two, three. And what are those? So, we'll, again, we'll choose up as positive. So, we've got FT cosine theta here. And again, another FT cosine theta right there. 
and then minus mg equaling 0. Now we can simplify this equation. We'll get 2 ft cosine theta equaling mg. We just take the mg to the other side, and it becomes positive. And finally, solving for ft, we will get mg divided by 2 cosine theta. Now we can plug our values in. We know that the mass is 70 kilos. So 70 times 9.8 divided by 2 times cosine. And the angle here is 55 degrees. And we'll get so the tension ends up being 598 newtons. And that's our tension force in this rope. OK? That's the end of that problem. OK, so here's our next problem. Our next problem is uh, this well, it's a traffic light or a mass, doesn't matter, hanging from a, a couple of wires. These are separate wires. They're not the same wire. Uh, also, the angles that they form with the horizontal are different. You can see it's 45 on the left and 37 on the right. So I'm going to call this FT1, and I'm going to call this cable force of tension 2. So our purpose here is, or our objective is to find, oops, F not, find FT1 and FT2. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out how to do it. OK, so here is the solution. What we're going to do here is, again, we're going to break this up into vertical and horizontal. But before we do that, let's draw the free body. Now, the free body here, in this case, I'm just going to treat it as this point right here, where all three cables come together. So I have, so for my free body diagram, I have and I'll draw these in different colors. I have a force going like this. I have a force going like this. And a force going like this. OK? Now I know that this angle is 37. This angle is 45. And this is straight down. And this is mg. And we'll label these guys FT2 and FT1. Now, I'm going to break. Actually, you know what? Maybe I take off those. That's not the right place to put those guys. I'd rather put them here. So that FT1 here and FT2 there. Now I'm going to use a different color to denote the horizontal and vertical components of these guys. There we go. Now, um, let us now go to, let's say, our horizontal analysis doesn't really matter which one you pick first, since we're going to need both to do this anyways. Um, but essentially here, this 37 degrees, OK, notice it's with there. So uh, I don't know if you've, you guys have ever heard this, but it's, a, um, it's like a geometry term. If you have two parallel lines, OK, this is called alternate interior. That means these two angles. So if you, if you 
cut two parallel, if this line here and this line here are parallel, and you draw a line through them, then these two angles are called alternate interior. An alternate, oops, you can't really see that because of my image there. Okay, so alternate interior angles are equal. That means this angle equals this angle. That means that if this is 37 here, then this is also 37 here. And if that is 45, then this is 45. Now 45 is kind of special because the complement of 45 is 45. But nonetheless, uh, this works. Now we can more easily calculate these vertical and horizontal. This is FT2 sine 37. And this is FT2 cosine 37. And this one here is FT1 cosine 45. And like I said, cosine 45, sine 45 is actually equal. So, But we still want to do it properly. Uh, and this is FT1 sine 45. OK? Now that we have that, let's go back to our horizontal analysis. And for our horizontal analysis, we're going to have only two forces. We've got this one and this one. So we've got minus FT1 cosine 45 plus FT2 cosine 37. <coughs> And both of those, remember, summation of the forces, they must equal 0. So they have to equal 0. Now we can't solve this. We cannot solve this because we have two unknown values in one equation. So we stop there. Now we go to the vertical analysis. And because FT1 and FT2 are different. We, we, mathematically, this is unsolvable at this point. So if we go to the vertical analysis, and again we say the summation of the forces must equal 0, then now we know we have 1, 2, 3 forces. So let's add them up. Again, by the way, I kind of, I'm doing this every time, but I'll say up is positive and to the right is positive. So in this case, I have positive FT1 sine 45 plus FT2 sine 37 minus MG equaling 0. OK. So now what do I do? OK. Well, guess what? We can't solve this equation by itself either because, again, there's two unknown values. We can, we can kind of simplify it slightly. We can go FT1 sine 45 plus FT2 sine 37 equals mg. Uh, but again, the problem here is we have two, un two unknown values in one equation. However, and here's where the first part comes in, if we incorporate both the horizontal and the vertical, we now have here this equation, which has two unknowns, and this equation, which has two unknowns. So now we have a system of a, uh, we have a two by two system. That means we have two equations and two unknown values. With two equations and two unknowns, this should be solvable. There is a number of ways of solving this. Um, for example, we could use substitution or we could add or subtract the equations. Um, and 
personally, I would say maybe the simplest way to do it here would be to go for substitution. So, because really the cosine and the sines, um, they are actually uh, just numbers. So, why don't we do substitution here? So, what do we do? Well, let's take this first equation here and let's solve for ft1. Uh, or actually, uh, yeah, sure. So let's take this equation and we'll rewrite the first one. We'll go ft2 cosine 37 equals ft1 cosine 45. So I just took this term, t took it to the other side of the equals, and it, become, it flips the sign so it becomes positive. Now, if I solve for ft1 here, I just divide both sides by cosine 45, and I get ft2 cosine 37 divided by cosine 45, and that gives me ft1. So you see now, I have this number, and I can calculate that, no problem. So this gives me 1.13 ft2 equals ft1. Now I'll take this and I'll substitute it into here in the second equation. So let me make some room and I'll go, so I'm just gonna rewrite this equation again, this boxed equation, the second one, but now I'll substitute this in wherever I see ft1. So it's gonna start out with 1.13 ft1 times sine 45 plus ft2 sine 37 equals mg. Now, oops, actually I made a mistake. Uh, this should have been ft2, not ft1. Okay, my bad. So notice here, this is 1.13 ft2. There it is, 1.13 ft2 sine 45. Now, if you'll notice, I have one equation and one unknown value. Now all I gotta do is calculate these values of sine 45 and sine 37, add them up, and then I can get my answer. Okay, so now I multiplied sine 45 by 1.13 and I calculated sine 37. I got 0.6 and 0.8, and if I add them up, I'm gonna get 1.4, ft2 equaling mg, and so therefore ft2 equals mg divided by 1.4. And I need to go and figure out what my mass was. My mass was 30. So I just go 30 times 9.8 divided by 1.4, and I've got my answer an answer of 210 newtons. And that gives me FT2. Now that I have FT2, I can substitute this back into here and multiply that by 1.13. And there is my answer for FT1, which is 237. That's the end of this problem.